magical kitties in River City. River City is as near as your own backyard and as familiar as your mom's apple pie. The humans here don't even notice the terrible troubles that threaten their quiet rural town. Of course, that's because they're protected by magical kitties, on constant alert against mystical mischief. Welcome to River City. Nestled into the curve of the gently meandering river, River City looks like a thousand other small towns. In fact, those who know how to open their eyes and what to look for find River City filled to the brim with the wondrous supernatural and paranormal. Kitties romping through the city's alleys, parks, and secret ways find magic almost everywhere they go. It's hidden just out of sight from the blissfully ignorant humans, but constantly calling out to those looking for a little excitement. The truth is that you probably already know River City. If you haven't lived somewhere very much like it, then you've probably visited a place that's similar. You won't have to think any further than the streets and parks you played in yesterday to flesh out its neighborhoods. So, we will begin in Gilbert's house. Gilbert has just returned home from a evening's romping out in the streets. It's about nine o'clock at night, and he's just coming in through his secret entrance back into his house. Her. Her! She's a torty. I don't know. I don't know what a torty is. As far as I know, a torty is a tortoise, which is sitting to the yes. right of me right here. It's a tortoise shell. That's that's the color of the coat. All tortoise shell cats are female? One in every, like, 30,000 is male. Oh, wow, really? But yes, it's, it's, it's on the, uh, yeah. Plus it says she, right, on your character sheet. I apologize. Yep. No worries. I apologize. Okay, Gilbert has returned home to her house. When she gets there, she's surprised to see three other magical kitties waiting fretfully for her arrival. She sees Scout, Chrissy, and Rooney. And I think before we venture any further, we should probably have you introduce your magical kitties. Yeah, uh, Gilbert Dumont, Claire Marquis de Lafayette is a domestic short hair torty. She is long and thin, but not underfed. A fairly striking divide down the middle of her face separates the half of her body that is mostly black with some orange from the half that is mostly orange with some black. She's nine years old. Should we describe our human, too? You can go ahead and describe your human now, sure. <laughs> I like my human description even better. Uh, Jack Dunn. Fiercely loyal, tenacious, and with a desire to settle down, River City's newest copper isn't afraid to ruffle a few feathers. The younger sister of Joe Dunn was never going to make friends easily in River City. Already at odds with the McLeans, Jack arrived <laughs> determined to get to know Ruby and baby Joseph. Jack certainly doesn't hold the rest of the McLean women in high regard, and the McLeans definitely see Jack as a threat to their relationship with Ruby and the baby. <laughs> with Caitlin's murder trial looming, will Jack finally accept who her brother really was? And will she hang around River City for long? I love it. There's like 5,000 plot lines going on there. Okay. Hey, Merry Christmas. Confession, since no one will ever get the inside joke. That's literally the description on the BBC website of the character Jack Dunn from the Scottish soap opera River City. Oh, oh Jesus. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So how about Scout next? My uh, description is not nearly that um, <laughs> that in-depth. Uh, I uh, Scout is just uh, kind of a, a brown tabby cat with big green eyes and kind of a floofy tail. Uh, she's kind of round like a potato and a little skittish around humans. Do you want to know about humans yet or no? Yeah, yeah, sure. Her human is Marion. And yeah, a really pretty lady. Spends a whole lot of time reading um, and complaining about seasonal affective disorder. And, uh, you know, wears her hair in like, she wears very sensible clothing, wears her hair in a nice little tight updo, you know, when she works. But for some reason, whenever there's a parade in town, she wears these really pretty banana curls. Um, which is very out of character for what people usually see her like in the town library. She hangs out in the town library a lot? She is the town librarian. Oh, yes. Marion, the librarian. Yeah. Hence the trouble in River City. Yep. How do you spell that trouble in River City? Uh, uh, it, it's capital T. Monorail. Yeah. Rhymes with B. <laughs> and cool. Which stands yeah. for pool. Yep. There we yeah. go. <laughs> yep. 
Um, that's exactly it. <laughs> Can I tell you something bad, Katie? Yeah. She can't be the town librarian. Oh, she oh, can't? No. no. <laughs> that, that's okay. Okay. Can she be the assistant librarian since she hasn't been promoted yet? She can be the assistant librarian. Certainly. Okay. I mean, if you want to be, if you want to be really picky, she can be the assistant to the librarian, assistant to the regional manager. But that's totally fine. Yeah, she can, she just works at the library right now in whatever capacity you want her to be. Hilarious. You probably ruined the adventure, Katie. I know. The town librarian is Preeti Buchan. Oh, okay. Her GM knows nothing about River City. That actually is probably <laughs> a good thing because, you know, Marianne's been pretty apathetic about work lately, and I think it's because she has her eyes on that librarian position. And, yeah, uh, maybe, because Preeti's known, known to be quite flighty, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, that works out well for us. All right. Very good. Let's move on to Chrissy. Oh, Chrissy. Chrissy is a, a very small, scruffy kitty. Um, she has long hair, and it's sort of a mix of, of like gray and black and white and silver. It's just, it's she just looks like a scruffy cat. She's not dirty, just scruffy. She of course has an attitude. She uh, she has to be very careful with the with the pyrokinesis that she that that is part of her uh, abilities, <laughs> because you know if she loses her temper, sometimes stuff just blows up. Her human is Declan. <laughs> He's Damon. Damon will laugh at this. That's good. He's, a, he's, you know, he's in high school. He's a senior. He's very pale. He has green eyes. His parents named him Declan after they spent when they were dating. They spent a weekend in Chicago for like St. Patrick's Day, and then they decided that they must have Irish in their blood, which they don't. They're Polish, but they decided to call him Declan anyway for some reason. And because of that, I think he gets a lot of grief from both his friends and his enemies, because they think he should sound Irish, since he has such an Irish-sounding name. And of course, he doesn't, because he's not. They also tease him. They make, like, you know, kind of rather bigoted jokes. They they mock him when he gets, like, French fries from McDonald's and stuff like that. He's It's really kind of... It's the whole situation is very sad for Declan. And that's about it, I think. He's very mm. dreamy. Po like I said, he writes poetry. He's very dreamy. I love a dreamy cat named Declan. <laughs> dreamy person named Declan. Oh, dreamy person. I mean, okay, I, li I like him less since he's not a cat, but. Um, <laughs> the, cat is, the cat is Chrissy. That's right, 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 right. That's right. I was listening. Oh, I swear, I just got confused. <laughs> I should point out that Declan gets in trouble a lot, too, for th stuff that he doesn't do. He just gets yelled at. That's you know, amazing. A lot <laughs> down the hallways. Just because Declan, there's always people yelling at Declan. That's amazing. So, yeah. I forgot to mention that Scout is named after Marion's, you know, the the child of Marion's favorite fictional character, of course. Ah, uh, yes, of course. of course. Yeah, because every librarian is obsessed with that. Agatha Finch, as, large, as far as I know. And Rooney. Well, I didn't write novels like the rest of you. I didn't so, write that. That was all off the top of my head. Most, uh, well, most of it was, but go ahead. Uh, Rooney is a lean and athletic calico cat. He's like mostly white with a distinctive face mask. He's got pale green eyes and a long tail. He's pretty athletic. All right, he's describing one of our cats. That's not really imagination. <laughs> I thought Rooney would be, I thought it'd be hilarious. Name. I thought it would be hilarious to see what Rooney, if I could translate Rooney into this role-playing game. Oh my God. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, yeah. So Rooney, he, he, he's like, as I always describe him, he's all cats all at once, all the time. He can be cuddly, he can be skittish, he can be brave, he can be absolutely chicken shit. Sometimes he can be a little clever, sometimes he acts like an idiot. It's all of the above. You never quite know what you're going to get with him, he's kind of unpredictable. His human is Kevin, who is a political blogger who just can't anymore. And uh, he tries and fails to relax by hitting the local bars a bit too much. That's all, That's all I'm going to say about Kevin. Very thinly sketched, Kevin. He's just an angry young man. Okay. So as I said, it's around nine o'clock at night in River City. And Gilbert, is it Gilbert or Gilbert? I guess it would be Gilbert, wouldn't it? Yeah, let's go with Gilbert, though. Okay. <laughs> so um, we'll go with Gilbert, given your, your attitude towards all things French. Gilbert du Montclair Marquis de Lafayette was a revolutionary war hero. You say so. So was Chrissy. Okay. So Gilbert comes back into her house through her um, 
her magical way and finds her four friends waiting for her, all in a state of alarm. One, two, three, three friends all waiting for her in a state of alarm. And it transpires that Rooney, Scout, and Chrissy's humans all appear to be missing. Oh, and that's not good. None of them returned home. Is Jack home? Where is Jack usually to be found? Either at work doing cop shit or at home, so I guess it would depend on... It's nine o'clock at night. Bill might be doing cop shit. So it's not totally weird that she's not home right now. Okay. Let's say it's totally weird that she's not okay. home. Okay, well, right I mean, now. I'm on edge about it for sure, but it's... it's Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chrissy and Rooney and Scout all say that their humans have not been seen. And it's nine o'clock at night. And what's even stranger is that none of their humans' families seem to care or even notice that they're missing. All right, well, we got to sniff out where they are. I mean, it's not abnormal for, for, for Marion's family to, like, not know that she is around because it's not like they talk to each other very much because they're super, super like, uh, disapproving of, of her choice of work. But uh, I know something's wrong and it's terrible. And she's probably dead. Scout, your human works at the library, so maybe we start there first, and then we hit up the bar, and then the high school? Are those the last? <laughs> should, we hit, should we hit it up in that order, or should we hit the bar last? <laughs> okay. Is the school next to the library by any chance? That was just my first idea of where to start looking. So the town square is just to the north of Gilbert's house where you all are right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's a large uh, red town hall next to the library. Then there's the town square. Um, there's also McCavity's sweet store and a pet store and a toy store <laughs> and a garage. Yeah, the library's closed. Let's, let's start out there and then we can decide where we want to go next. Okie doke. I agree. Okay. As you start to head out, you hear some um, clanging and banging coming from the side of your house outside and it sounds like it's coming from uh coming from where the uh, trash cans are kept i'm nosy trash. i'm gonna i'm gonna you know what are we outside now sure and we just hear hey so so how far from the trash cans are we you're about 10 feet now then i teleport to the opposite side of the garbage cans well, okay because i can do that whoa <laughs> you fancy get the get the drop on whatever it is banging back there and I am nosy, so yeah, I'm going to instantly want to check it out. Yeah, okay. Um, scrambling around your human's garbage cans are these um, little pixie-shaped kind of uh, thingamajigs just made out of bits of garbage, like bits of metal, bits of cans and stuff. And they're just going through the garbage, and they just seem to be taking extra little bits of metal garbage and just attaching them to themselves. Mm. They see you, they notice you, and... Um, they go, oh, hi, kitty. Um, hello. We're scrap pixies. We're just collecting some lovely trash. That uh sounds wonderful. We've been going through the neighborhood collecting trash. There's some good trash tonight. Yeah, well, well, good. I'm, I'm glad you're having a good night. Wait, wait, why is the trash so good tonight? Trash is good every night. Okay, so it's not especially good tonight, you're saying? No, no, no. I see. I withdraw my question. But where are you going with the trash? Oh, we just take it back to our pixie <laughs> pixie hovel. Your pixie hovel is that should is that anything we uh, are going to be interested in? <laughs> no, your kitties are far too big to fit inside our little hovel. Is there mm. anything in their in their trash armor that they're building that looks like trash that my human threw away recently? No, they're just using aluminum can lids and. Okay. Twist ties and any any manner of thing they can find. Hey, calm for a second Probably. here. Yes. What well, since since I'm supposed to be a trouble seeker, which means I'm good at finding and dealing with the supernatural troubles that bother magical kitties, is this anything I can do anything about or deal with or these don't seem dangerous in any way. Okay. That's fine. By the way, garbage pixies. <laughs> I would like to <laughs> ask you, have you seen any Humans, what have you seen a particular very pale human walking around looking for Lorne? Young guy, you know, green eyes, kind of cute. Oh, yes, 
You have? Yes, he was dreamy. <laughs> dreamy. Where did you see him? Oh, we saw him hours ago over by the library. By the library. Oh, of course. Okay. Did you see my most important human in the world while you were there? What would that human look like? Uh, uh, Marion, the most beautiful, uh, the almost librarian in the world. She, the blonde lady. Oh, well, yes. We, we saw her this morning going to work at the library. Did you notice the police officer that lives at this house? Yes. We saw him rush out. Her. Her. <laughs> rush out. <laughs> her. <laughs> oh, the editing will be a dream. Uh, we, yeah, we saw her rush out just uh, a little over an hour ago. She had a book under her arm. She looked like she wanted to get to the library before it closed. I suspect we ought to go to the library, folks. I think so, y'all. Scout, have you have you been to the library? I mean, yes. Do you know a a special magical kitty way in? Colton, do I know a special magical kitty way in? I would I would like to think so, but I don't know for sure if my character does. Um, let's say no. Oh no. Okay. I tried to follow Marion in like just directly one day, and she shooed me away and sent me home. Well, if we can find a a cracked window, I can I can teleport in. But let's let's head over there and see what's what. Start zooming to the library. Do we still have Rooney with us, or is he? Oh no, I'm here. Off doing something else. I was I was I was busy looking at something else, but you caught my attention again. That, that, yes, yes. Yeah, I figured. Okay, <laughs> let's go to the library. <laughs> Although I don't think I don't think Kevin's going to be there. He does too much reading already. Makes him mad. <laughs> so you get to the library and it, now it's like 930 at night and it's closed and the doors are, are locked. The, you know, the night lights are on inside. Is there like a, a an external book deposit? Oh, yeah. Oh. Right right by the doors. There's a, the book return drop off slot. I bet you I could squeeze into there. Well, then go for it. If you want to, like, you you can use me to jump off of if you want. If that helps, I can prop you up a little bit. Sure, sure. Whatever will work. Sure. So my, my magical power is the stretching. Oh, so. <laughs> right. You don't need to use your magical power. Oh, no, I don't? Okay. No, you can manage to squeeze through that. Excellent. In I go. You get in there, and you find yourself in the book return box, and the door to that box is open and it drops you out into the lobby of the river city public library and it looks like the um though the doors are locked it looks like they can actually be pushed open from Ah. the inside thanks for reminding me i should probably go open the doors rather than get distracted because there's a lot of things to look at around here all right i'll go and open the doors hey come on in okay we all trot in quickly Yep. Okay. You enter a large stately chamber filled with rows of shelves, some public computers, and a service desk. This is the main floor lobby of the library. And in the center is a circular display table with several levels stacked in tiers. On the display are a couple of dozen books of all different sizes and descriptions. And these books are moving. What? And Ooh. talking. Ooh. That's okay. new. All this secrecy is downright disgraceful, says a hardcover book with the image <laughs> of a butterfly on its front in a shrill voice. Portal tomes are the most consequential discovery in this library's history. This knowledge ought to be shared. Some of you won't admit even if you have portal tomes. I'm going to be uh, nosy and I'm going to play into both my flaw and my talent here. I'm going to be nosy. And a reader, and I'm just going to walk right into the middle of the event and, and say, "What's a por- what's a portal tome?" <gasps> New faces. What a relief! Says a book titled "Young Poems," before quickly adding, "No offense, Councilman. I'm sure your speech is very important." She turns back to all of you. Welcome to our world, furry friends. Can we help you find something? Uh, you can help us find four somethings. For some things, we're, we're looking. We're looking for our humans. Our humans are missing. Well, backyard biology might know something about that. And the book with the butterfly on the front says, "Hmm, I remember 
Several humans entered the library today, but I also noticed that not as many humans seem to leave. Oh. Do, do, do you know Marion? She works here. Oh, the assistant librarian. Yes. Yeah, the most important person in the world. Um, did, did you see her leave today? Preeti is the most important person in the world because she's the head librarian. Pretty is a hack. Marion will take her place someday. Uh, but did Marion leave one day? Did she leave today? You know, how curious. I don't believe she did. Thank you. Very strange. Hmm. This is the Library California. <laughs> <laughs> Up to the Library California. And then um, uh, another book. Um, it's The Return of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. <laughs> Lifts his pipe to his mouth and these books have these books are quite strange because they've got paper arms and paper legs and, and pipes and yeah well sherlock holmes <laughs> has a pipe well yes <laughs> they're paper and they're smoking i you know <laughs> sherlock holmes said it's funny you should say that there are missing humans because i could have sworn i saw a human inside the once and future king by th white while doing some detective work in the fantasy and science fiction section earlier tonight. One of my favorite books. I want to go see The Once and Future King, please. Oh, such a marvelous book. And um, Young Poem said, yes, I think I saw one in the children's room earlier. I didn't see them leave either. Oh, and what did that person look like? It was a young man with green eyes. <gasps> Declan! <laughs> Uh, a scout definitely looks very seriously at the party members and says, friends, I think that there is trouble in River City. We should go look. Right here in River City? Yes. Monorail. <laughs> All of a sudden, you hear the sound of marching feet. And Ooh. then suddenly coming down the stairs from the second floor comes about 30 books. And each book's origami arms are shaped into big, intimidating muscles. And each of them carries a paper spear. Uh-oh. And four of these books are carrying what looks like just an ordinary book. And seated on top of that book is a rather fancy black and gold book. You hear, who shall we pick? Backyard Biology says, oh no, the biographies are coming. <laughs> and the biographies continue marching down the stairs. And then they all stop in unison at the foot of the display case. And the gold and black book stands up and declares, Books of the Display Council. I, Ramesses the Great, by Daria Abbasi, come in the spirit of a brighter tomorrow. Long have the greatest books of the library, the biographies, been ignored and unread. No longer. We demand to be given every spot of this lobby display for our use. Now, we demand our chance to be read. The display council is shocked. The lobby display is a place for all books, they say. It's meant to be shared, not hoarded by one kingdom. We refuse to leave. Then Ramesses the Great shall declare war uh -oh. upon the display council. Do y'all need an intervention? I, I say, I say, Perlay. Oh, oh, oh. You've earned your keep today, Cam. <laughs> I would like to remind you all that I can light things on fire <laughs> in a library. That's so great. maybe, maybe we ought to just settle down for a second. I'm hiding while I say this, though, because, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to stick my neck out. I can, you know, do this from afar if I must. Are you going to attempt something here? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I don't. I don't know yet. I, I, I'd have to find out who the enemy is. We don't really know who's who at this point. We just know that they're pissed at each other. Yeah, I, I, I agree with our with our Perlay. Um, can 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 we please find a peaceful solution? We we have troublesome things to investigate in the library, and we need all of our you know bound brethren to help. Wait, don't. Don't the humans usually figure out who gets to be on the display case? No, the council decides each day who shall share a this spot. This is some Night at the Museum shit, Damon. Yeah. <laughs> roll with it. So, no, that's fine. Rooney can roll with it. 
everybody just he, he cocks his head. He's like he's confused. Like, well, rather than have a war, could we pick a human to just to figure out what to do? Nonsense! Humans can't make such an important decision as what should be read. It's <laughs> not our fault. No one reads biographies anymore. Why don't you take turns? Like, why don't why doesn't everybody get a fair chance? Have a biography week. A biography week, and you could. Can... Yeah, that's great. Can we get a cute check here, maybe? Um, check? From... Ooh. I would love to do a cute check. Let me see. We're gonna need. We're gonna need. It's gonna take like Ramesses the Great is clearly going to need some convincing here. Clearly, this has gone on for a long, long time, and he's basically brought a war party here. So he's going to need. It'll take at least probably a four to to sway him. Oh dear. So my cute is three. Is there a way I could work in my uh, reader talent because that would grant me a die? Ooh, seems clever. I enjoy reading books and other writings, so I would think that maybe I just have a little bit extra familiarity with with books and how they work. If you read books that well, you should be able to read how Ramses is feeling because he's a book. You should be able to read him and like use that to your advantage. I'm stretching, but it made sense in my head. I'm the cat that stretches. <laughs> okay, so that, that yeah, I'll allow it. That'll give you four dice. So you can you can roll four dice, and you're looking to be. And I need to succeed on all of them. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. You don't. If you don't get a four on any of them, it's a failure. A one is a, is a success, but a success with a complication. It's you know this is basically oh, like yeah. um, Dungeon World or gotcha. Monster of the Week. Two is a success. Three is a success and a bonus. Five, two, two, two. So we have one success. Ramses is swayed, and he um is the leader of the display council also swayed. <laughs> <laughs> the because they both the, need to agree, the, right? The display, the display council are just are just afraid of Ramses, to be honest. Okay. At, at this point, perfect. Uh, perfect. But he's not fully swayed. But he says, "Very well. You have avoided war this night. We shall return to the biography section and await representatives from the council and debate with them on an amicable solution. But if none is found, rest assured." I will return this time tomorrow night with 60 books. Oh dear. And we shall have the display case for our own. Chrissy? Yeah? Can, can you just, like, make something start to smolder a little bit? I can try to do that, sure. Well, don't fail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a garbage can. I assume because it's a library and there's always going to be garbage cans and there's maybe some paper in it. Can I get that to smolder? I'll just hiss. That sounds good to you. <laughs> I'm just hissing. <laughs> the biographies then turn around and begin marching in an orderly fashion back up the stairs towards the second floor. I look at Mr. Butterfly in the sky over there and I'm like, y'all really like you should work out a rotation. Like everybody deserves to be read. And maybe if you partner together, you can do some cool, like I'm um, backyard barbecue dude. And let me give you a biography of Alton Brown and it could work out really well for everybody or not. That's great. I'm just saying be friends, but we have always done it this way. Oh, just because you've always done something that way doesn't mean it's the right way to do it. Ramesses is a bully. Ramesses doesn't want to share. Ramesses wants the entire display case for biographies. Well, maybe... He is maybe you heard him. He's impossible to be reasoned with. Everybody can be impossible to be reasoned with, but there's a really good chance he has... You know how nice it is to be read? He probably hasn't been read in a really long time. And maybe if you work together, you guys can be friends and everybody can be read. And maybe you can make somebody's day a little bit better. Well, it would appear all Ramesses really wants is to get more biographies read. Is that what everybody wants is just to be seen? Perhaps our delegation will come to a solution. I think it's a good idea. I mean, you can all learn from each other. Like, did you see how well organized they were? Like, that's a skill. Maybe you can learn from them and maybe they can learn from you. Perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Well, if the Girl Scout's done here, maybe we ought to... <laughs> yeah, we got, we got humans to find. Yeah, sorry. Marion says that we should all get along. No, that's that's great. You know, I understand. I perfectly understand. So you were saying the the Once and Future King was the the first book we were going to go check out. 
I think that was one of them. And then I think there was something in the children's section, too. Yes. Oh, Rudy pops up from behind the front desk. Oh, what? Are we going somewhere now? That's what I, I was wondering if we knew where Rooney was at this point. <laughs> he sees that he sees the tree in the children's section and starts running off that direction. Let's. Oh, OK. I guess we'll follow that. I was going to say six, the, the sci-fi fantasy section is closed. So but... you're going to head towards the uh, the sci-fi and fantasy. Okay, as you're... Um, as you're well, I guess you're... Rooney just ran off in the other direction. Can we go in two separate directions? Because I would like to go find Declan, because supposedly that might be who's in the children's room. Well, Rooney, again, he spied like the treehouse, so that's where he headed, because it caught his attention. That's He's impulsive, fine. after all. Well, so am I. <laughs> so where are you going? I guess we're all going together, so I think we should go see go to the once in future. Rooney, mm, what? We we have to go over to the sci fi section. But but but, but 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 you can do it. You can do it. You can. Are do we gonna? It. Can, can, yes, okay, we're gonna pro- come back. We're gonna. Come okay, back. okay, fine, fine, fine. Oh, be careful at the sci fi and fantasy section, says Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. They're decent books, but odd. Half of them spend their time looking for the chosen one, and the other half are always talking about how the library's computers are becoming self-aware or something like that. Um, <laughs> okay, thank you. Good luck with your display dilemma. <laughs> Let's go. All right, then. So now Rooney is zooming around the science fiction section wondering what he can get into. Okay, as you uh, as you get closer to the um, science fiction section, you hear some hushed kind of whispering, and you see two books in front of a closet door, speaking in hushed tones. One book has the image of a lightning bolt on the cover, and the other is a picture book. Three a day, says the lightning bolt book. I can pull things out of the books for him three times a week, perhaps but not three a day. Three a day is what my king demands. And if you want the children's room spot on the display, it's what you'll provide. Hello. What's going on? What are you talking about? What? Yeah. Hello. The book with the lightning flash on it turns to you, and you see that it's uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And the other book... Biography. Is uh, No, the other book is <laughs> Hop on Pop by Dr. Seuss. Oh, awesome. And, and it goes hopping away. Uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein approaches you and says, Oh, greetings, furry friends. Isn't the library closed at this hour? Not the cats. Hmm. Well, how may I help you? We are looking for humans. Mm-hmm. Humans? Mm-hmm. Have you Particular seen humans? Yeah. Whole, whole humans? humans, not just bits and pieces. Oh. Humans. Oh. Entire whole... <clears throat> You know, uh, well, yes, we see humans here during the day. It's a library, but we have been closed for several hours. There are no humans here now, except Preeti, of course. Right. Where is she? Oh, well, she's about here somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, uh, where's Marion? Who? I thought you. I thought you said you saw Marion with Preeti. Calm down, Scout. Calm down, Scout. No, okay. no. Oh, the assistant librarian. Yeah, the most important person in the world. Well, we saw her earlier in the day, but I I haven't seen her. I'm sure Preeti probably knows where she is. So where's Preeti? She's around here somewhere. I can't be everywhere. I'm just a book. Also, well, what is your king demanding of you? That sounded really stressful. Oh, that's the king of the children's section. It's a personal matter. It's not something we need to discuss. Okay. Well... Stress is a very serious thing, and it gets a lot worse in wintertime, so please take care of yourself. Mm. Is there a particular book you're looking for? Is the Once and Future King about? The Once and Future King? Hmm. Well, yes. It's here in the broom closet. In, in the, the broom, broom closet. closet. Are, are they available to speak? No, 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 no. It's a portal tome. The portal tomes do not speak. What do they do? It's a future king. It's a portal tome. I need to see the once in future king right now. (laughs) Uh, It's a broom closet? Yeah, Mm -hmm. two. Right next to where we are. I think that's where we gotta go, y'all. They were talking about the portal tomes being a big deal up front. All right. All right, so we gotta go in. That's right. 
Very well, but take care in there. Anything you we should be on the lookout for? Well, there's CBBB and Riri. What? Did you speak words or did you just make something up? CBBB and Riri. She's our guard dog. <gasps> a dog. My tail poofs. There's a dog in the broom closet? Uh-oh. We pulled her from Greek myths. Oh, shit. Oh. We are fantasy and science fiction. And oh, so no. we get two portal books, she says, smugly. Oh. We have the Once and Future King and Greek myths. I thought those are science fiction. <laughs> That's because you're a cat. I'm just going to go. I'm going yeah, in. Let's go. Let's go. I get along with dogs. This is great. Here we go. Uh-huh. And dogs, I, just, I don't know. I just mm. charge through the door. My uh, impulsivity will, will is, is forcing me forward. All right. Okay. Come on, Rudy. All right. I'm not so sure about it. this dogs, after all. Yeah. Do it! <laughs> and we're in the room. Hey. We're in the broom closet. So you're in this dusty closet. And sure enough, you can see the spines of the Once and Future King and Greek, myth, Greek myths I'm sitting on the floor here. Sitting on top of them, lying on top of them, is a miniature three-headed Cerberus dog. Mm-hmm. Does anybody have a loot? <laughs> Very musical. Yeah, for recorder. They're currently taking a cute nap. Aww. Does anybody have a loot? Um, for for indeed he was he, he he was oh what's his name Orpheus was able to get past him. Who's Orpheus? I I'm very musical. If if we could find one, I could play it. Does anybody just sound like a lute? I can also <laughs> sing. I'm a very musical cat. <gasps> Oh, maybe that maybe that would be a way to get through Cer- but past Cerberus or something, or get him to get up and move without making him mad. Okay. I mean, after all, that's how Orpheus got down into to to see Hades. Who, who the hell is this Orpheus? What's Hades? Look, Rudy. <laughs> look over there. It's a shiny thing. One of the heads <laughs> opens an eye and then leaps to attention. Soft kitty, warm and, uh, kitty, little ball. Who are you? Bird. Who are you? Happy kitty, sleep. I am a good dog. Kitty. You're a purr, very good dog. Look at purr. your I am. I am a good dog. Very Beanie, good Beanie, dog. Wake up. Wake up. Be good dogs. Strangers here. Woof. Very good dogs. They're the, these tiny, just tiny little things. They're like about the size of a Pomeranian, but like really, really, really vicious looking. Her name's Chrissy. <laughs> the middle head goes, ah, you will get past us, for I am very strong and also a good dog. Yes, very, very good dog. Absolutely a great dog. You're a wonderful dog. And then the rightmost head just says, oh, come on, let's just bite them. Tail poofs. Uh, keep, keep, keep singing, Scout. <laughs> uh, soft kitty, warm kitty, little ball of fur. Happy kitty, sleepy kitty, purr, purr, purr. Is it working? You know any dog songs? Uh, soft puppy, warm puppy, little ball of fur. <laughs> um, Let's get a cute roll then out of Scout. Oh, I'm not cute, y'all. I'm, I, I'm, I am definitely not cute. I am. Yeah, oops. but you're, um, you're going, uh, oh, what is your cute? Your cute is only. My cutest one. one. Yeah. And your, but your musical gives you another one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm rolling 2d6. You are rolling 2d6. Okay. I rolled a 5 and a 6. That is two successes. That couldn't have gone oh. a whole lot better. <laughs> That's great! That's mm-hmm. great! I mean, they're, they're, I start to run out of ideas for dog songs, and I do start trying to sing a really pretty version of, like, who let the dogs out? Ooh. I try really really hard. I cry. I bet bet you they cry. (laughs) The head called Riri goes. I I don't I don't want to bite these kitties. Oh yay! They make a pretty song. Good dog. Good dog. Cece said, "I am a good dog." Such a good dog. Riri is not a good dog. I am a good dog. Yes, I am a good dog. Thank you. All (laughs) dogs are good dogs. Yes, you are. are. Dogs. Can we please see the Once and Future King? Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. The dog steps off the book, and it's this leather-bound book, 
And uh, sure enough, embossed on the front, it says uh, The Once and Future King by T.H. White. I look to see if this is, if it includes the Book of Merlin or not. As you open it, there's a swirl of color and glowing lights. And you all find yourselves just falling into the book. And as you fall through, you're just surrounded by colors. And then gradually you hear the noise of trumpets and cheering crowds. And then suddenly all of the colors stop, but the noises don't. And you find yourselves in a crowded wooden stadium, surrounded by cheering humans dressed in medieval clothes. I knew it. Below you, Yay! in the center of the stadium, two knights charge at each other on horses, jousting. Their lances strike, and one of the knights falls. The victorious knight trots to the end of the field as the crowd goes wild. A knight's helmet is removed, and you see no one else but Jack. You're missing human. It's it's Jack, guys. Um, I I uh uh book it up there. Okay. And and um, th- they're still mounted on their horse. They are still mounted on their horse. I kind of do some big figure eights uh to the side of the horse, waiting for them to get off. Okay. Just as you're getting there, there's a loud boom from a nearby tower, and a cloud of glittery green smoke billows from an open window and begins to fall into the stadium. The cloud crackles with magical energy like a thunderstorm. An elderly wizard in a purple hat thrusts his head out of the window and shouts, The smoke is dangerous! Run! The crowd screams and begins to run for the exits, but some are already trapped in the expanding cloud, including Jack. Uh Oh. I, I, I gotta rush in. I gotta get to Jack. Rooney, can you help? What am I supposed to do? I don't know, you're stretchy. It sounds like Gilbert is going for a... What are you going for here? Fierce? Well, I mean, I'm just trying to get to Jack. I, I guess that would be... You could use your teleport power now. No, I can't. I just used it with the pixies. Different scene. Oh, cool. Then, yeah, if if, if I'm within 20 feet... I would go ahead and teleport right up into the saddle with Jack. Okay, well, you can attempt to do that. So let's do, you can do, you get four dice. And you're looking for... That's my fierce plus my magical is what you're doing? Yep. Okay, just understanding the mechanics. Is this not using your power in front of humans? Oh, well, this is... Um... I mean, if if these humans are enveloped in a... Uh... They're already in a fog magic, cloud. A magical environment here. Uh, okay. So 46? Yes. You're looking to beat fours. Five, three, two, and two. That is that is one success. And it's more than just a success success, right? It's Well, it's a success with a complication. Oh, oh, because it's not the number on the die, it's the number of total successes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Yes, yeah, so you do you do make it to Jack and you manage to pull her from the saddle. Is that what you want to do? Yeah, I guess I guess my, my goal is to get Jack away from the, the dangerous purple smoke. You might want to just stay on the horse and make the horse move. Yeah. Horse is gonna move faster. Which way is the horse facing? Can can I swat the horse to get it to move in a in a direction away from the smoke? Yeah. Or try to take my claws in on one side or nope. the other to get them no to claws. try and dig your claws into a horse. Okay, that's going to be a well, just one hand, like a like a good swipe to yeah, get it moving. That's still going to be a fierce. Okay, so you've you've just got you've just got two dice, two d six, and a three and a one. Oh. I I was gonna yeah, I was gonna leave that as a three, and that will so that is a success. So yes, so the horse bolts and takes you and Jack ahead of the cloud. But the cloud is still rolling into the stadium and is still rolling towards you. What are my compatriots up to at this point? Um, where, can, where can you even go to? Like, I'm not sh- like, where is it possible to go? I mean, I can't make the smoke go away. Is that wizard still there? There is still a um, glowing magical portal from where you... Yeah, rescue Declan. Get De- or uh, Jack. Get Jack out of here. Come on. We probably have to go to all the portals in the library. 
So get let's get Jack out of here. Good idea. There, see, I'm good for something. Again, Maybe. how? How many perks? <laughs> go towards the green portal that we came in. You can just go towards the green portal. Is Jack going to follow us? I mean, he's on the horse with you. Okay, I will try to swat the horse and steer it towards the portal. You know, that... an- can animals understand us? If I scream out, "Hey, horsey, follow us!" Does it understand right. what I'm saying? Oh yes, a horse understands you. Yes, horsey, please yeah. follow us. It's safe over here. Okay, so you just you're just going to exit out of here through the portal. If, if, if that seems like the safest place, yes. Here's an idea. Rooney will run under the seats of the stadium and and claw the butts of these people, so they'll jump up and run away. Gonna be your fierce. Sure, I suppose. You could maybe use your stretch to move more efficiently. I was gonna say the, I could I could, I could get a whole bunch you of, could... I'm hoping I could use my stretch to like get more people sure, all at once. Absolutely, yep. that would be four. Okay. All right. So four d six. Yeah, and you're looking you're looking to beat a four. Well, I got one five. You managed to get most of the people away. There are still some, and the green cloud is still, you know, it's not dissipating. It, it's just getting thicker and thicker. If somebody gives me, I mean, you're over, you've already decided to use this um, portal to leave. So if somebody can give me a, just a, like a cunning roll, perhaps. I, I can cunning. Okay, so my cunning is three. So that would be three dice. Is there is there anything you can give yourself for an advantage? Well, what's the goal of the roll? Because you've basically decided here to just use the portal. So I'm thinking you're using your cunning to decide to never mind. Just go through the damn portal. Okay. I think I think you can all just go through the portal at this point. You've got your human, and you find yourselves back in the broom closet with your human. There's no horse. <laughs> Relief. <laughs> the book closes. Your human Jack just kind of wanders out of the broom closet in just kind of a daze, and it seems like they're half asleep. And he just mutters to you, Well, that was fun, but I think I'm going to go wake up now. Oh. And he just wanders off. She. She. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting Jack and Gilbert mixed up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't uh, do that intentionally at all. <laughs> okay. Um. So follow them out of the room closet, and does it look like they're heading towards the exit? Yes, they're heading down the they're heading down the stairs in the library. And if I follow them to the exit, do they walk in the direction of home, which is only a block and a half away? Yes, it looks like okay. where they're going. I think my friends helped me out. I owe it to them to stick with them and help them out. So I'm going to trust that Jack is going to make it home. Thanks, Gilbert. Humans are okay. They can take care of themselves. Sometimes. I mean, without us, they'd be completely lost. Let's be honest. Okay, well, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, that's very true. So you're in the, you're in the broom closet with, these, uh, with this little tiny Cerberus dog and a copy of The Once and Future King and a copy of Greek Myths. Is Cerberus Dog like just like friendly to us now? Like yes, not necessarily best friends, but but willing to converse. Yes. Uh, have you been Have you been guarding these books all day? Yes, we have. You are good boys. Thank you so much. That lady that just came out with us. Did you see her go in? Oh yes. Did you see anybody go into Greek myths? Mm, no. I wish I could go to Greek myths. You can't? Why don't you? Frankenstein took me out. She needed a guard dog. I, if, if I bump into Miss Shelley again, I'll have a talk and see if she can maybe, maybe rotate you out and give you, a, give you a vacation, because you're a very good boy. I am a good boy. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can do that for you. No promises. If you guys want to go look around Greek myths, I mean, I'm curious about it, that's for damn sure. I'm nosy about it, I guess I should say, but we might have better better luck checking out. We saw someone go to the children's section, or we heard yes, someone yes. went to the children's section. Let's go there. Yeah, where the tree is. Yep. Yeah. And we promised you we would, so let's let's do that. Declan! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you make your way to the uh, children's section, and as you get there at the entryway, you can see inside the children's room. It's decorated like an entirely different library. The shelves are made of painted wood and colorful banners hang from the ceiling. The centerpiece of the room is an enormous bookcase shaped like a tree. Its trunk and branches are full of shelves. Standing in the entryway are two talking books, 
posted as guards. One of them is tall and thick, the other is small and thin. Salutations and greetings to you, furry ones, the smaller book says. Before you can enter this fabled hall, we must make sure you are ready. One of you only tells the truth. No, 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 don't be silly. Our king loves flattery, you see, and he will not stand for weak compliments. As such, we test each visitor with a bit of role play before they can come inside. All right. Oh, okay. game. You must each tell me how you would flatter and compliment our king. And the tall one straightens up and goes, I shall be the king. Now, please impress me. We're looking for the grandest compliments delivered with aplomb and a lot of energy. You are so tall that no kitty treat is beyond your reach. And your and your graciousness and, and generosity is so great that no kitty would go hungry once you have distributed those treats. I'm going to need a cute roll from Rooney. Okay. And the guard says, Indeed, that was a most appreciative salutation. Thank you. Our king will be most pleased with that. Can, can Rooney go in? Is, is he allowed to go past? Sure, Rooney can go in. He immediately starts jumping into the... No, he doesn't. <laughs> what does what does Rooney immediately do? Go ahead. He wants to start jumping into the shelves of the tree. Oh, okay. You're making it very difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Rooney is going in the shelves of the tree. All right. I believe Gilbert was going to go next. Okay, let me let me see here. I'll say pardon me, but are you for real? You're the cat's <laughs> pajamas. Live long and prosper. You're perfect just the way you are. So fur, so good. Uh, right, get God. A, okay, let's, let's let's get a cute roll. That's three dice. A six, a four, and a two. Oh, absolutely. Yes, the guard bows and allows you through. So whoever wants to go next may go next. I'll indicate who, like, did they indicate who the king was? Like, no. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to I was I was trying to think if I could find a way to do a cunning thing, but I'm not smart enough and my cat's smarter than me apparently. <laughs> I I guess I, you know, I would um attempt to do like a kitty bow and flourish and and I would say um, you know, I, I, I'm going to attempt to flatter the ego of a monarch and say, oh, good and intelligent majesty, I look forward to providing you whatever counsel I can as a, as a subject of your realm and bask in the glory of your cleverness and, and, and smarts. That's all I got. Okay, roll. Am I rolling cute? You got to roll on cute, unless you got anything to add to it. I will do a little uh, song and dance. You you could have you could have sung it. Yes. Okay. Let, let's let's do two two. Dance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that went well, y'all. I rolled a two and a three. Mm, you must work on your compliments, Kitty. Yeah, I know. He waves you in anyway. Oh, that's nice of you. I'll I'll be better. But the king will not be impressed with compliments like that. Okay. <clears throat> your majesty. I know that you're not your majesty, but your majesty. I will not flatter you with empty praise. For I don't know much about you. But I've heard of, your, of you sort of behind a veil of mystery. I do understand the breadth and depth of your, of your kingdoms, the, your huge tracts of land. <laughs> <laughs> They're all, from what I understand, it's you have the, the tallest, the oldest, the most beautiful tree here, and I would love to see it. And I would love to know more about you so that I can know better how to serve you. Oh, very well. Roll. Okay, hold on. How Oops. good I find your flattery determines how difficult I make the roll. <laughs> By the way. Okay. Oh, one and a six. Up oh, a six is that's all we need. That's all right do. then. Okay. Yes, he waves you in. You're okay. You're in the you're in the children's room. I'm going to see the king. And oh, why am I having stuff? There's only four of you. Why am I having trouble? 
<laughs> Rooney, Rooney is of course already scrambling his way through mm-hmm. the um the true the branches of of this huge tree bookcase. Typical. That's a lot of fun. And um, as as Rooney is scrambling up there, he you see a um, bookcase about three quarters of the way up that um, seems quite sparkly and bejeweled, much more so than than the others. Ooh. Oh, obviously I am there. Yeah, I want to go to there. So uh, when you get up there and you see this shelf that's completely covered in colorful stickers and buttons and enamel pins and there's just tons of all of these sparkling glistening objects and then in the middle of all of this is uh, a copy of the emperor's new clothes by hans christian anderson Mm -hmm. and as you climb onto the shelf he exclaims would you look at this visiting kitties how stunning (laughs) <laughs> the Emperor's new clothes exclaims, I would love to chat, but first I must ask, he raises his arm in the air, posing, what do you think of my new jacket? He eyes you intently. It's the most amazing jacket this cat has ever seen. I'm literally in love with it. <laughs> You're so fortunate. Oh, God. It gives you personality. <laughs> Are you on some website of puns? <laughs> yes, I googled cat puns. Of course I did. <laughs> Wait a meow mint. I'm positively blushing. <laughs> Wait a meow mint. God. <laughs> That's the worst one yet. <laughs> Book, you're looking feline. You look so pretty. <laughs> oh, enough, enough. You must join my court and be the royal flatterer. <laughs> I'm feline good. Um, pardon me. Um, what? Perhaps before I join your court, you could help my friends and I with a, with a problem. Oh, by all means. How may how may I be of assistance? And I kind of defer to. We believe it was Christie's human that was seen here. Yeah, Your Majesty. There possibly was a very pale, sad-looking human with green eyes that came through here and. He's a writer, and and I, he might have written, uh, write, he might have written, he might have written beautiful things to you. He certainly was not dressed as nicely as you are, but that's he's a kid, so you know he probably just put on whatever was on the floor when he rolled out of bed. But have you seen him? We never reveal our true natures to the humans. The humans just see us as mere books. Uh, what is your realm's, uh, portal tome? Ah, you know of our portal tome. That would be Hansel and Gretel by the Brothers Grimm. Well, oh, a no. fine book. I'm sure you will agree. So I have heard. Of course. Absolutely. May we check it out? Oh, by all means. If you can find it. Oh, is there a, is there maybe a trail of breadcrumbs towards it? I jest, I jest. With such flattery, I can tell you it is hidden in a compartment at the base of this grand tree. And as for your question about a human in our portal, I do not know of such things, but I have heard rumors. Oh. Some humans have been in some of the various kingdoms' portal tomes, but I have seen none. For I have so little time for look. At all of my splendid gifts, and he extends his arm over all of the glittering crap on his um, shelf, all of these buttons and bows and stuff. And then there's like there's a particularly large enamel pin that has a magic wand with jewels and tiny wings. That's positively impressive. Enough. Enough. It is. That one I came up with on my own, you can tell. these portal tomes are quite wonderful but you know you need to know how to use them correctly i've heard that a book from the natural sciences kingdom has gotten itself lost in their own portal tome oh we keep hearing about this this... i know we'll have to go there yes one last question before i go if i may impose upon your your majesty 
Please just 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 let him do it because have you seen, <laughs> have you have you seen the uh, librarian lately? Pretty, I have not. Who has time for such things when I have so many gifts to look at? I certainly certainly can see that. Well, we'll be off to your portal book, and and I I hope I can rejoin your court soon. Oh, very well, very well, very well. Keep up the meowmentum, and okay. uh, 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 <laughs> we can we can head down to the. Uh, oh my God, you're fired. Portal book. Okay, yeah. well, you climb down to the base of the tree, and behind a lid that's shaped like a tree knot, you find a secret compartment. And in the compartment, sure enough, is a copy of Hansel and Gretel by the Brothers Grimm. And is, as you listen, you can hear the sound of birds chirping and what sounds like liquid boiling or bubbling coming from inside the, the book. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sure that's nothing. This might be a catastrophe. Enough out of you. (laughs) I married that man. Yeah, remind us that Cam is never allowed to join us to game again. (laughs) I guess we go in. We open the book and go in, right? Yeah, you fall into the spinning colors of the portal book. And the noises of chirping birds and the bubbling cauldron get louder the further you fall. Then suddenly it all stops. And you are standing in a forest just in front of the exit of the portal. Dozens of birds of all different kinds hop around on the ground nearby. Oh, I'm getting distracted. They peck at breadcrumbs scattered on the forest floor and say to each other, What look, what a feast! And I say, What look, what a feast! <laughs> nope, nope, focus. focus. Uh, don't be a sourpuss. Oh, I don't. <clears throat> so, where are all these crumbs from, do you think? We saw a, a young girl wandered through here just a few hours ago. And she left the crumbs for you, or possibly to find her way home again. Oh, no. Uh, Hansel and Gretel left those. Oh, but there's there's a young, another person, or somebody that went through. Huh. Well, maybe we should just find, I mean, is... Declan? Follow the crumbs, we should, right? We should probably follow the crumbs. I, follow I'm, the crumbs. I'm overthinking a game designed for six-year-olds. <laughs> follow the crumbs. <laughs> the birds look a little bit guilty and say, oh, well... There was such a feast of breadcrumbs that I, I'm afraid we ate them all. But huh. we can show you where she went. That's there we go. She was headed towards a house of sweets. Oh, of course. That sounds right. Oh, yes, indeed. It's made of candy and gingerbread. Perfect. But the old woman who lives there gets very angry at us, who tried to eat the house. So we don't go there very often. Well, if you could just lead us over there or tell us where to go, that'll be good enough. Yeah, and they point you in the right direction, and um, they just tell lean you over to, to Chrissy. Can we eat them now? <laughs> no, keep keep uh, walking. Just keep Jacqueline. walking until you reach a clearing, and if you get lost, follow the plume of smoke in the sky. Right. All right then. Yeah, you arrive at a small cottage made of gin- made of gingerbread, candy, and icing. Smoke billows out from a jelly bean brick chimney on the roof. There is a young girl collecting firewood in a pile in the front yard. I mean, do we do we recognize the? I'm assuming that's not Declan. Never mind. Um, uh, no, it's not. I will. Humans can't understand us. I was about to. Get no, but this is a, this is apparently a magical land, and we can that's, even use oh, our well, powers let's, here. So. Let's, I I was gonna out use... in me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, Katie. no, you, go. For I didn't it, mean to cut you off. Oh no no I I don't know what I'm don't, let, don't let Cam talk again. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> no more of these cat puns, man. No, if you if you want to ask the question, I can do this at another time, and that'll work out fine. Okay, um, I was gonna use my telepathy to um, eavesdrop on their thoughts, and on the girls' thoughts. Yeah, to see. Um, What's happening? Oh yeah, she's just she's just thinking. Oh, I can't wait to get this firewood to Frau Hex. She's going to make us a lovely dinner. Oh, and I thought my puns were bad. Your puns are appalling. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. They're going to make her a lovely dinner. I'm worried that they're going to get cooked. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. We gotta go into the. Let's go into the house. You okay. want to go in through the front door or through a side window? Window. 
Window, sounds good. Is there an open window? Yes. As you go inside the house, you find yourself in a one-room cottage filled with candy furniture. In one corner, you see a cage, a little iron cage. And inside the cage is a boy and Marion. Well, nothing to see here. Let's go on. (laughs) Scout, do you see? Eat Marion. Um... Okay, uh, uh, do, do we see anybody else in there other than the people in the cage? Oh yes, working in the kitchen is a woman who is clearly a witch, right. who presumably is the Frau Hex that you heard the girl speaking of to herself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, she is currently feeding firewood into a huge brick oven. Oh, well, cats are nothing if not sneaky. So I try and sneak over to the cage to see how it's secured. It is just secured with a single bolt. Just a dead bolt. Okay. Um, Can I undo the bolt? With a cunning. Let's make that a cunning. Oh, great. That's what I'm best at. Okay. So that's just one die, I think. Right. This will go very well. Did not go very well. Oh. Uh -oh. And not only as Rooney tries to open the cage... Um, Marion and the boy, who we'll call Hansel, because I'm tired of calling him the boy, are like silently trying to shoo you away. You pay and, attention to uh, that. Indicating that it's dangerous. But as Rooney tries to slide the bolt, it makes an ungodly loud creak. And uh, Frau Hex mutters to herself and turns around and goes, What? 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 What's this? What's. <gasps> Oh, disgusting vermin. Disgusting vermin. Yeah, I, I jump up on a table and I start knocking shit off the way that a cat does, trying to cause a <laughs> distraction so that hopefully Rooney can uh, keep working on the bolt. And I just start like, I start singing the song of my people going, <laughs> and uh, making as much noise and knocking over and breaking as much shit as I can. Okay, well, one. Well, that seems like a lot of stuff. So <laughs> what I'm, just trying, I'm, I'm trying to get their attention away from Rooney in that door. <laughs> what do you want to go with here? You want to go with a cute, the singing's always a cute as far as I'm concerned. Um, you can go with I mean, a, this is like howling. <laughs> you, can go, you can go with a cute, a cunning or a fierce. What do you, what do you think you're, Oh, what do you I'm, think you're going? I, I mean, cunning will always be where I'm going at because, I mean, it's either cunning or fierce because I am very worried about Marion and I'm either trying to be smart enough to piss off this lady and break her stuff or fierce enough that I don't care and I'm just going to like try to bring all the attention on me. Well, let's but, go with cunning if that's your best. Okay. So, okay. And do you have anything else here that you can if, if If I consider it singing the song of my people and howling while I do it, because that's what I do to wake up Marion in the middle yes, of the night. Yes, absolutely, yes. I always okay. add, add your musical, because you're always using it. So Okay, so that, that gives me four dice. Okay. Okay. I have a two, a four, a four, and a two. So two fours. Oh, and I can, and I'm going to re-roll a kitty treat or go to use a kitty treat and re-roll one of them because cam told me i could oh or, or i'll re-roll any or all dice in the dice pool for a single check you okay. could re-roll both twos if you want okay, yeah i think i will if you want okay yeah oh I'll yeah we kitty forgot about your kitty again. treat yeah use one of your kitty treats okay uh that made it worse <laughs> well no because you thought you have two successes Okay, cool. You have two successes. That that is all you needed, and um, the, yeah, the witch just covers her ears and goes, "Oh, that ungodly howling! It hurts! It hurts! It hurts!" Good. I I try I try to find what looks like the nicest cup or the nicest bowl, and I make sure to knock it off the table so it breaks. Okay. <laughs> all right. It's what's what's everybody else doing here? My first instinct had. And Avengers Assemble, and I was just going to teleport and claw her in the face. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So that yeah. is a fierce, that's two. Fierce, plus I'm going to use my teleport to, to just get straight to her face, so I can do four there. Don't scratch witches in the face, kids. <laughs> I mean... Or do, it's the right thing to do to save your If face. someone kidnaps you and tries to eat you, scratch the fuck out of their face, kids. Uh, 46. A six, a three, a one, and a one. Oof. 
You know what? I'm going to re-roll those two ones. Okay. I've got kitty treats. No, I can re-roll. I can re-roll. Uh, the three, the one, and the one. The three, the one, and the one. I can re-roll three d six. How does it? Does it say in the rules whether whether you re-roll before or after you know? I do not know, and okay. I'm I'm running. But I'm going to use a uh, kitty treat because we're halfway through the game and we haven't used any. Yep. Uh, that's a six, a five, and a three. So I've got. Okay. You have three. You have three, three. successes. And oh, I'm going to blind three. the bitch. Three successes means uh, so. It means I get to blind the bitch. No, here's what uh, here's what you get to do. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, you give two owies to the witch, which defeat her, and you send her tumbling. Well, how do you dispatch the witch? Um. Yeah. The idea. I. I. I would imagine that if I jump on her face and start clawing at her face, maybe she trips backwards over something. Yeah. And and bonks her head. Okay, sure. Real good. Yeah. So she's just she's just knocked out. She's out for the count. Okay. And you also, seeing as you have three successes, you get a bonus. So your bonuses are a fellow kitty gains an extra die in their next dice pool. You or another kitty can shrug off one owie you suffered. You also accomplish a second goal. I'm going to give my buddy... Rudy, are you actually good at, at cunning, and you just rolled bad? No, I'm not good at cunning. You're not good at cunning. Then I am going to give an extra die to Scout to, to try to open the lock now, which I should do anyway. This is this is their human. Yeah, um, as soon as I see that, that the, the, the bitch is owied, um, I will uh, uh, jump off the table and go straight to that cage, and I want to but, attempt to but open Chrissy it. But Chrissy hasn't had a go. Oh yeah, Chrissy. Do Chrissy thing. hasn't had a turn yet. The, the witch is down, no? <laughs> yeah, the, the, witch, the witch is down. I mean, I mean, I actually, I actually have a uh, cunning as well. Oh, go for it then. So... Then I'll give you, I'll give you one extra if you want to try at the. Okay. So I have three, so that's four, right? Let's see, a five, a two, a three, and a one. So I think I would like to use one of my kitty treats and re-roll three of these. Oh no 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 a five at a five and a three you've got yeah oh no you're good you're oh, good okay okay you're good so um yes so the the cage is opened and the yeah. uh, the young boy goes running out and uh, bursts out through the front door to find his sister and he takes her running away running away from the house and heads them for home I I run straight for Marion. And Marion goes, Oh, is that it? No, I can't. I keep forgetting people. Mrs. Doubtfire there. (laughs) I keep forgetting people's names. I can never keep track of the names. Um, I've got like, I have like five things open in front of me. Uh, It's just like, it's always the wrong thing. Um, Yeah, and she's like, Scout, what are you doing in this dream? Um, I am, uh, 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 um, I, I am like in her lap and I am making biscuits on her belly and I am like nuzzling. And now I am, because I'm in a dream, I am going to start like pulling at her shirt and trying to get her out of the cage to follow me. Okay. And she follows you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I do the annoying cat thing where I do walk in between her feet as she's walking. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'd like to lead her back to, um, to the portal yeah okay well you all make you all make it back to the portal and you go through and you find yourselves back in the children's section all right then what is marion oh mary marion is like uh, in much like uh jack is in a just kind of a half asleep dozy state and just begins you know walking towards the exit and heading home my, my favorite person in the world. I'll see you soon. Okay, who's next? Well, we only got the information for two different. Places. Yeah, do we need to ask ask around a little bit more? I would think we do. I mean, we could just start trying portal books in different departments. But what other departments do we have left? Let's take another look at the I map here. Kind of want to go check out the library office and see if Preeti is hiding in there. So we have uh, natural sciences. Wait, wasn't there natural sciences we were supposed to go to? And biographies. 
So we've got biographies and natural sciences, and the library office is at eight. Let's swing by the library office real quick, and then we can go upstairs. Okie doke. Is that okay? Yep. Perfectly fine. <laughs> oh, no, I said perfectly, but... Uh, yeah, you yes, did. you did. <laughs> You're fired. The disease is spreading. My work here is done. Okay, you go to the library office. And back here are shelves filled with unsorted ordinary books. A woman with a pencil stuck through her messy hair hums to herself. She's making books float magically while she organizes them. First of all, that is a really just upsettingly disheveled bun for a librarian. Um, okay. I'm going to pull Scout back. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say... Our friends helped us. We need to help their humans first. Um, I think we can, though. I want to use my telepathy, and I want to listen to what Preeti is thinking to herself. Genius. Um, and you go inside her head, and she's like, oh, da -da 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 -da. oh, this was such a good idea. I'm just bringing so much sunshine and happiness into people's lives. Preeti, you're such a smart witch. Such a smart witch. People were so, so unhappy and dull, and now you've given them excitement and fun, and everyone is so happy. Um, so question, um, I don't understand what, so under my telepathy I've got bonus features. How do they work? Do I have those right now? Um, you do not have bonus features, but, 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 but. Um, do you need to know what your bonus features are? I have them. I have Mind Probe and Mind Link. Oh, you do have Mind Probe and Mind Link. Let me just make sure here with the kitty treats, because I think you've still got another one. Oh, and I yeah. think... Yep. Uh, Reroll any dice. Avoid taking an injury. Use a bonus feature you don't have for one of your magical powers one time only. Um, I don't think you can use your bonuses until you level up, but you can certainly use a kitty token and use one. I think I'm going to, and I am going to um, mind probe, which I am no longer limited to observing what they are currently think about. I can delve into their mind and pull out specific information. So if with what I've heard about her being a witch, I want to probe and find where the other locations are, where the other people are. Um, I don't know how many pieces of information you'll let me get, but that's the big one I want, is where do I find the other portals where our humans are? And if I can get extra, I'd like to know if there are... I, I lost track of what I was going to do, but I think I want to know like if we need to stop her. Like, is she evil? <laughs> Do I need to scratch? Oh her no, eyes you out? get no. You get the sense that she's a good witch. And oh, she's a good witch. She, she thinks she thinks she's helping people. Oh. And she thinks that basically, if um, she sees somebody who's sad, she would suck them up into a book that she thought they would love, and then put the book back. She thinks her humans are sad. Yeah, and she thinks it's fine because. Before she does that, she casts a spell on them, and that puts them to sleep. Oh. So they just think they're having a very happy dream. Okay. And her spell also makes it so no one remembers or misses them while they're gone. So nobody, Except... she, she doesn't think she's harming anybody. And um, she put someone inside um, a book called The Dinosaur Guide. Oh, okay. Um, in natural sciences. Okay. And then another one in um, a book called The End of Al Capone in biographies. Okay. Um, so you know that thing that cats do when they're like sleeping and their eyes are still kind of like, they're mostly closed, but they're a little bit open and you can see their eye kind of roll back in their head. That is totally what I look like right now. And uh, I pop open, shake the wake the way a cat does um, with those weird inner eyelids. And I say, I know where our people are. And I tell them the locations of those books and say, where do you want to go first? So you could go release the final people yourself, your final humans yourself, or, you know, I don't, perhaps there's another way to have them released. I should have done something different with Priya, but I can't anymore. Pretty. Well, maybe someone else can. 
I think you also I remember think... she's she's a witch, so she's a magical creature, so you can converse with her. Oh. oh. I jump up on her desk. Do y'all come with me? Yeah. She jumps in surprise and goes, Oh my goodness. Kitty cats. How did kitty cats get in here? Oh, I let them in. <gasps> <laughs> what do you magical kitties want? I know you like think our humans back. Yeah, I know you think you're helping people and but we remember that they're gone and we miss them very much. Oh, but I just want to make them happy. And that's really nice. I don't I'm think it's positive you, you were you were well intentioned, but that's a bit radical. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> How to me? Look, Declan always looks like he's bummed out, but frankly, he's really happy being like that. It's his favorite. You know, he's a teenager, for God's sake. So everything is supposed to be maudlin and, you know, dreamy and sad. He's he's fine. He's, he's happy. Yeah. Well, well, if you're certain. I mean, I don't understand how anyone could be so unhappy with cute kitties like you for company. Aww. That's just, that's just it. They might get unhappy about certain things, but... I think getting killed by horrible green magical fog is worse. Yeah. And I mean, I know that Marion seems sad. what's happening in the books. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't going well in there. No. Um, hmm. Or getting I, cooked I, into a pie. Or eaten by a dinosaur. Yeah, I don't think that's really going to make anybody happy. No. Huh. Have you tried reading these books? Oh, of course. I've read all of these books. They almost ate Marion. Well, you are awfully cute, and you do make a compelling argument. A compelling argument. <laughs> I don't oh, God. No. Oh, no. Um, you did, Cam. Mm, oh, God. I mean, These puns are appalling. I, I, start, I, start, oh. I start singing, and I say, you know, there was love all around, but you never heard it singing. Oh, yes. You know, never this, heard this, it this at all. Right. Yes, it has to so end in a musical you. number. Yeah. <laughs> so I start thinking about how even though there's love all around, they may not hear it singing, but one day they will when there is you. Um and I sing at her. Oh dear, it's a shame it's you cuz it's okay, let's get a let's get a cute and, a, and your musical. Uh, well, so I'm that's, not cute. That, that's two a, dice. That's a two. Okay. Um here you go, sparkle dice. Oh no, I rolled a 1 and a 2. Oh dear, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, it just sounds like it just sounds like just howling to. That to, was a um, catastrophe. Yeah, I tried. I even quoted the it, music man, y'all. It, I tried. It literally was. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that's hysterical, David. Well, Rooney just looks at her and says, "I mean, you heard what I said, right? It's dangerous in those books." He just looks at her with big eyes. Oh, let's get a let's get a cute roll. Oh yeah. Can, oh yeah. Who, we can, got who, can, boots who can resist those puss in boots eyes? Six four one. Six four one. A six and a four will do it. And Preeti says, Well, I suppose it was a bit of a drastic way to try and make people happy, wasn't it? Perhaps I didn't think it through. Then she just uh flicks some books in the air and goes, Bippity boppity boo. And um she said, Very well, your last remaining humans are free of the books and sure enough you see um your last your last remaining humans who aren't Declan. written with Declan but then Damon hasn't written one down here so I don't Kevin. know who is. Kevin Kevin wow it's not like you made that up just now no no I, I mentioned at the beginning yeah, of the adventure did. Oh, did you? okay yeah, I, don't did. Have, I don't have it written down apparently Kevin is very forgettable well I mean he's, he's a political he's blogger. a blogger yeah so you see the two of them um, just strolling quietly out of the library and out the door and back to their homes. Yeah. Nice. Um, before we go, Miss Preeti, um, I, I really suggest that you um, arbitrate between your display council and your biographies, because I feel like that uh, there is some growing animosity between those two factions, and I feel like everybody needs a turn. Hmm. That's a marvelous idea. I must Thank pass you. that on to Marion. <laughs> yeah, she'd love that. She wants some more responsibility. That'll make her really happy. 
Well, if she wants more responsibility, there's certainly more work. And I'm getting quite old. Perhaps it's time to seek a replacement for head librarian. Yes, please. That's just between Mew and me. Ha 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 the value of of literacy and you all go back out into the night and rest assured it's safe in the knowledge that your magical kitties have once again saved the day i love it i zoom me home and i curl up with marion and then credits roll and at the end there's a end scene where gilbert dumont claire marquis de lafayette just pops back up and says I'm feline fine. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Till there was you. All right. Well, that's it. That's Wait. magical. We saved the day. Oh, I love um, it. 